Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Clear Company webinar on inclusive banter. I'm Heather McVicker, a management consultant with the Clear Company, and today we've got around 30 minutes, and as part of that time, there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers at the end. You can submit questions as we're going through um, the presentation. There's a box at the bottom of the right-hand side of your screen where you'll be able to submit the questions, and I'll answer them, as I said, at the end. The objectives for, for today. What is banter? When does it become bullying? When banter becomes serious? Looking at inclusive language? And some do's and don'ts from an employer and an employee perspective. It's worthwhile remembering that some people are naturally brash or assertive, while others are introvert and sensitive. So it's natural for personalities to clash sometimes. What humours one employee may hurt another, but when does banter become bullying? Banter could become bullying when there's an imbalance of power or when one person is receiving more of the teasing than anyone else. If someone seems to get teased more than others or is a repeated target of a joke, then it's not really banter anymore. The dictionary describes banter as a playful and friendly exchange of teasing remarks. Some people are um, naturally brash, as we've said. And when we look at this, the playful and friendly exchange of teasing remarks, it makes us think that it's actually just a bit of fun. And friendly banter is fun, right? But what happens when it crosses that line and is bullying in disguise? In friendships or a one-off scenario, two people can make fun of one another in a genuinely good-natured way. However, if you see or hear of a situation where one person is teasing another repetitively, this could be considered bullying, especially if the targeted employee looks hurt or isn't reacting. Equally, a heated conversation may escalate into aggression when personalities clash. In this situation, there may be an aggressor and a victim. Banter can take, take many different forms. We've had friendly banter where there's no intention to hurt and everyone knows the limit. Ignorant banter that crosses the line, but there's no intention to hurt and people often say sorry. And there's malicious banter, which is done to humiliate a person, often in public. Workplace bullying is an epidemic which is estimated to cost the UK £18 billion pounds a year. A survey by the TUC revealed that nearly a third of people have been bullied at work, with women experiencing it more than men. The typical age being 40 to 59, where 34% of employees are affected. Other surveys and research reveal that over half of managers recognise bullying as a very important issue to address but spotting tense relationships and hostile behaviour isn't easy, especially if manipulative employees are acting covertly or suffering employees aren't seeking help. What I'd like to do now is touch upon when banter becomes serious. And I've got a few examples I would like to share with you. So inappropriate banter at work can lead to discrimination and harassment claims. The damage to an employer's reputation from such claims, um, in addition to costs involved in defending a claim, highlights the importance of creating an organisational culture that is free from har harassment. So let's take a look at some of these cases. Heterosexual employee called gay won harassment a claim. A heterosexual male employee won a sexual orientation and religion or belief harassment claim after repeated inappropriate marks made verbally and by email. During one incident, colleagues asked whether or not this individual liked football. The individual replied that he wasn't interested and his colleagues said, you're gay then. He filed a grievance, which the HR director rejected on the basis that the remarks were office banter. The company's evidence 
was that this expression is quite normal in North East England football circles and is treated as a joke. The next one is um, looking at an employee in his 50s and this manager who had concerns about his performance said to him during a conversation, you're not 25 anymore and suggested moving him to a different role. The employee resigned and he claimed constructive dismissal following further conduct by the bank. The tribunal decided that the, the individual was constructively dismissed, but it wasn't tainted by age discrimination. However, they did agree that that one-off comment can amount to discrimination. In many of the cases we're sharing with you, the tribunals noted the lack of discrimination and harassment training within the organisations and a failure to update and follow relevant policies. Um, the next one is an employee uh, who complained about the attitude of her aligned manager towards her Irish nationality. She, um, the, the manager's behaviour was offensive, included repeatedly likening the employee to women on a TV programme, My Big Fat Gypsy Wedding. Although the manager said that her comments were office banter and she did not intend any malice. The Employment Tribunal upheld claims of direct race discrimination, racial harassment and constructive dismissal. The fourth case um, looked at the subject of speculation of relationships. So the claimant complained about a number of incidents, including that a senior vice president of the company groped her bottom and told her he would like to eat her like a marshmallow. She was also told by a manager that colleagues suspected her of having a relationship with male, married male colleagues. The tribunal upheld the claimant's various claims including direct sex discrimination and sexual harassment. It made recommendations to the employer, including that it review the equal opportunities training given to managers. Two more cases to review um, very quickly with you, um, because I think these are interesting to share as part of what is banter and what is not. The employee was subject to harassment compared to banter and carry-on films. A female employee was subjected to daily remarks that were of the same sexual nature as the theme of the carry-on films. Her manager gave evidence that banter, including strong language, was an everyday fact of life. The tribunal found that this amounted to sex discrimination and harassment. The tribunal said banter is a loose expression covering what others might be, a, be abusive behaviour on the basis that those participating do so willingly and on an equal level. It can easily transform into bullying when a subordinate employee effectively has no alternative but to accept or participate in this conduct to keep his or her job. And the last one is regarding an employee who worked in sales this individual was awarded over £2,000 for office banter that spelt into racial harassment. It commented that the office environment was conducive to healthy banter, but found that the claimant, who was a Sikh of Indian origin, was harassed when he was called a monkey or cheeky monkey during a golf match at which business matters were discussed. The employer did have a rudimentary policy, but there was no satisfactory guidance, no training, no monitoring and no policing of this policy. So what behaviour amounts to harassment? So under discrimination law, behaviour will be potentially amounted to harassment if it is unwanted conduct that has purpose or effect or violating a person's dignity or creating intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment for that person. The term unwanted makes it clear that it is up to the victim of the alleged harassment to decide whether or not a particular type of treatment is offensive to him or her personally. People are different and what one employee finds hilariously funny may be offensive or degrading to another. In judging, whether or not particular conduct may amount to harassment, it is important to bear in mind 
that the motive of the harasser is irrelevant. So what should we do? Word choice influences emotions. Studies show that exclusionary language is experienced as ostracism by excluded groups. A study into banter by the Institute of Leadership and Management shows that banter needs to be addressed by employers as much as full-scale harassment and bullying does. The banter, just a bit of fun or crossing the line report, surveyed more than 1,000 people and it found that 4% have actually left the job because of negative banter. This is huge in terms of recruitment budget, hiring new members of staff, and could cost something like £30,000 for some senior workers to replace as expensive consequence of what some describe as a bit of fun. The report also found that one in 10 women cited workplace banter as a cause of mental health issues. And despite the recent highlighted media awareness over inappropriate behaviour at work, such as the global Me Too movement, where the line is crossed, women are still less likely to challenge inappropriate behaviour than their male colleagues. With only 55% of women compared to 73% of men saying they would directly challenge banter. The study revealed that it is those at the midway point in their careers who are most affected by banter and suffer poor mental health as a result. Younger workers also suffer, with graduate trainees most likely to avoid work socials than any other group to escape the brunt of inappropriate banter. So what can employers do? Examine your existing policies. Be proactive and don't think that somehow over time this is an issue of working life that is going to fix itself. Appreciate any negative banter that leads to a loss of confidence and resignations has a real impact on your bottom line. Have clear policies on bullying, harassment, equality, diversity and inclusion. This is critical for employers that can be held liable for the actions of an employee. Along with formal bullying policies, have clear policies on workplace banter. If an employee feels that a conversation happening around them or one they've participated in is inappropriate, who do they go to talk about it? Do they know it's okay to raise such concerns? Be mindful that any unwelcome comments at work aren't just a bit of banter that can sometimes form the basis of a legal claim. If an employee has not experienced something as a joke, then the environment can soon feel hostile for that person. Create awareness of workplace banter and what is good or bad right from the start at induction. Create a culture where people feel they can raise concerns and be seen to be inclusive and diverse. Hold inclusivity training and discuss what might be considered banter by some, but leaves others feeling alienated. Publicise your policies and your training. So there's some general principles to consider. Some of these are in fact about taking into account modern workplaces. For example, gender neutrality reflects the change in gender balance. We no longer only have men in the workplace, so actually using gender neutral job titles reflects this change. It also helps us to challenge stereotypes and can reduce the opportunity for unconscious bias to dominate our decisions. If we have gender job titles in mind, we are more likely to support a historic stereotype. Not everyone uses the same language when talking about disability and there are no hard and fast rules. As a general rule, it's good practice to put the person as the focus of the language you use so that they are not defined by their disability or their disability is framed in a negative way. Other examples. So for example, we could say wheelchair user versus in a wheelchair or wheelchair bound. We often hear women referred to as girls or ladies, and although well-meaning, that can indicate a power or experience difference. Many women find this language patronising or feel that the same language is not being used in the same, the same context for men, e.g. boys or gentlemen. The core principle is to treat everyone as an individual although these are core principles. 
We all have our preferences about our identity and this should always be respected. There are no hard and fast rules as we do not know, and sorry, as what we do not know is that language changes that all the time and you don't have to be an expert. This about, think about using words such as gay, replacing Christmas with festive season, but equally don't assume that people don't celebrate even if they're not a Christian. And please try and be inclusive and in thinking about including everyone in Christmas meals, Christmas night outs and secret Santas. So what can we do from an employee point of view? From an employee point of view, we need to think before we speak. Would it be funny if someone said the same thing to you? Don't pick on someone's insecurities. Be aware whether someone is clearly not enjoying the banter. And if they aren't, please stop. Don't laugh along if you're not finding it funny. And saying something is just banter doesn't mean it is. There's a line, don't cross it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to everybody. I'm just going to look and see if we've had any questions submitted. So someone has submitted a question and asking about where can they find access to um, inclusivity training. And um, after this uh, webinar is finished today, we'll be sending out uh, an email to all the attendees um, with a, a link into the webinar and also some further information on what training the Clear Company can offer in that area. So remember, if you've got any questions, you can submit them in the bottom right hand box. I'll just give it one more minute. Um, someone's asked a question about, is there a guide for policies? Um, there will be information included onto the Clear Company website. Um, and for those of you that may be aware of, or if not, I'll introduce you into um, Clear Assured. Clear Assured is our uh, online resource tool, which helps you with a suite of online, online resources at your fingertips. And within there, it's effectively um, having your own diversity and inclusion uh, resource um, that you can access. And it helps also monitor and measure your progress within the diversity and inclusion journey. But you can find lots and lots of information, which will include things like best practice policies, examples, and there will be definitely more information on guides for um, in inclusive banter and policies. One of the things um, just to probably reflect back on when you look at your policies is to look at some of the examples I've given you there for the case studies and also thinking about um, the what employers can do piece. Thank you for that question. Um, someone else has asked about the term guys and is it in sexist when it's acknowledging a group of people within the workplace? And um, the answer to that is that um, it is found to to be by certain uh, individuals um, and it is seen to be something that uh, refers more in terms to men rather than being inclusive for everyone. Um, so I think when you're talking to individuals it would be better, a group of mixed individuals, it would be better not to use the term guys um, going forward. So someone has just asked a question about, um, sorry, I'll bear with me one second. So someone's asking about the uh, tolerance levels within teams. And this is something that will be adjusting all the time because people adjust and change. Um, and you really just need to keep making sure that your policies, your practices, um, the way you treat people are being adjusted um, as modern workplaces change and grow. 
and um, it's something that everyone just needs to make adjustments with. And uh, someone's asked if we'll be sending the slide deck out afterwards, and the answer is yes, we will be. Thank you. I think I've covered all of the questions that have been asked today. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, as I've mentioned, the slides will be going out um, later on uh, and uh, there'll be links into other information which hopefully will, you'll be able to help uh, you as you're going forward. So things uh, to do with training um, and further advice and guidance. Thank you very, very much for joining the Clear Company webinar and um, I hope you've enjoyed it and you've managed to take something away with you and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you.